right, guys, what is going on? Welcome to the One Percent Podcast. I I won't introduce I won't introduce her today because just go back a year. Is that yeah? Go back a year. Yeah. Ailey yeah. can introduce herself and then. You can watch this one again, maybe. So it's fine. But all we'll do is welcome Haley back to the podcast. How you doing, my love? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good. It's going to be a nice little catch up. I think it was. When... It is a year on. See what's changed. Yeah. When you what was it? It was just it was kind of just clicked when you uh, someone reshared it or something the other day. I was like, ah, oh, it's been ages. Let's do it again. Yeah. So someone, um, I woke up one morning and someone was like, I've just listened to this podcast of you and Brandon, and it's literally like changed my outlook on like how I need to structure my day blah 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 Mm. um and then yeah then we were like right we need to do it again it was a good one last time genuinely that last interview we did was the favorite podcast episode that I've ever recorded with someone no way epic yeah there you go hopefully we can do it again questions fair play (laughs) um what's what's happened what's been going on what's because last time you were I think you were kind of at a stage where you were you would learn a lot about yourself you were very clear and you were kind of going back to one-to-one or you I think you were just going back to fitness first at the time um yeah just going back to one-to-one PT yeah yeah and a lot I think you just did a you did a course in I can't remember what you did the course in or you did some form of CBT therapy yeah so kind of feel me because you're like I love these conversations with you because you're very very in depth, very deep. And I love that. I love that sort of side. You're very transparent about it. So kind of what's, what have you learned about yourself over the last year? What's, what's changed? What's been, yeah. What's, what's happened? I've learned a lot about myself over the last year. I've been through a lot. I'm not going to lie. It's been a year. Mm. Um, And the course that I, they did in obviously life coaching, CPT therapy massively helped me and also hindered me at the same time. Okay. So I got to a point where I thought I need therapy myself. Nice. So I, and I've had therapy and counseling and various help before, but I thought, right, I need to go back to it. And do you know what? Actually learning what I learned meant that therapy was really, really hard for me. Okay. Because if you don't know, CBT therapy is all about coping mechanisms and so I had, so the um, guy was like, okay, so explain like your problems in the consultation, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, and I feel like X because of Y and Z and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, wow, you're very self-aware. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and er- <laughs> that is my issue. <laughs> and I, I, I felt really frustrated at the end of it because I've been given all of these coping mechanisms, which I already knew because obviously I'd studied it, mm. but I still wasn't able to apply them. Yeah. And I was like, hang on a minute. But I think I learned that, you know what, however strong you think you are mentally, it takes one person to knock all of that back down. Oh, Yeah like you you can be you can be as far removed from the problems that you think you've had and one person or one thing can trigger you straight back to like square one Mm. and it's the weirdest experience and I actually saw I heard an analogy somewhere and it made me think oh my god this is what I've been trying to explain and it was like if a clown goes into a palace he doesn't become a king the castle becomes a circus okay yeah like one person can yeah yeah, change the trajectory of your life and your surroundings and how you view it yeah and I was like oh wow yeah um so I think I've learned a lot about myself and I'm like coming out the other side of it 100 percent. but I think yeah I just I've really learned how people can change change your life and how you view yourself and um, yeah, it's been a lesson. What have you learned this year? Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, do you know what? I, I think it's just, I don't know, like ugh, we're both so young, but we're like 70 year old people inside. And like you said, like oh, the, self-aware, awesome, the self-awareness stuff is, I think it, it is a problem. Like we teach people to become self-aware, but when you are self-aware, you're like, oh, like trying to deal with that is brutal. And I think that's what, 
it's been really good. It has been a really good year, I think. Like definitely being here, it took definitely six to eight months to be like, okay, like this is home and I feel at home sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think there's that still, I don't know what it is. I think it's because our personality types, we're always hunting for the next thing and hunting for better every day and things like that. And what I've learned is actually, I'm, I knew it, but now I've put it into practice a little bit. Like it's okay to be the same for a period of time. Like it's okay. Like maintenance or whatever you want to call it or yeah. balance. Like you can do that for a month, a couple of weeks. And even now, like, I'm like, okay, cool. So I've kind of got a week and a half where I'm like, I'm just going to do nothing <laughs> for a week and a half. Like just do what I normally do. And that's it. But I think there's just, I think like you said, as soon as you said one person, I'm like, it's so true. Like, yeah. and I think, I think for a long time, I realized that something was, there was a gap massively. And I think over the last, even few months of like the last three months, it's being filled now, which is mm-hmm. a really, it's kind of sad that you feel complete and you're like, fuck, I was like, maybe for so long, I just wasn't. I was a bit empty. Are we talking about a relationship? Just, it could be anything. Yeah, it could be okay. like, for me, it's been a relationship, but mm-hmm. I guess it could be like, and even towards the back of last year, it was like, oh, I've like, there's a few friends that are just friends. Mm-hmm. But if I just picked up the phone and I was like, bro, I need help. Don't, no questions. Do not ask why I need help. Yeah. Cool. No worries. Like things like that. So mm-hmm. it's been a very, um, yeah, I think a year is a long time, isn't it? A year is a long time, but also very, very quick as well. Because it does feel like yesterday we had this conversation. Yeah, literally. Um, a lot it's... can change in a year. And I remember in our conversation last time, we were like, you can change in like five minutes or an hour, like that person that we were previously, right? Like, you don't have to be that person. Mm. But so much can happen in a year. But equally, it's so okay if not much does. Yeah. And like, you're not in a massively different place to where we were. Like, as we said, we're the sort of people that strive for more and better every time. And I, th- I had a little bit of like a quarter life crisis. And I was like, cause I've just turned 26. And I was like, oh See, my that God. makes me feel old now that I'm just a little bit older than you. <laughs> I'm like, shit. Well, I was like, shit, that's like proper adulthood. <laughs> like there is just no, there's no two ways about that. And then I was like, when you look back at, like what you thought your life was going to be like at 26. Mm. And I was like, holy fuck, like that is not what my life is. And then I'm like, and then I, I change it back and I'm like, hang on, but I'm so like, I love, like, I love my life. Like I, I don't need it to be anything else, but it's as soon as you start allowing those like societal pressures and timelines to be put on things, mm. you're like, oh my God, I've not achieved this. I've not got this. I've not got that, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, I think it is mad. What did you think your life would be like at 26? Like, what was the, like, what, when you were kind of like early 20s even? Like, what did you think? I think I thought I would have like had a house, had a partner. I'm not really one for wanting kids. So that's, that, that's never like that sort of timeline pressure has never been in my head. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely thought my life would be a lot more settled. Mm. And, you know, like on the straight and narrow kind of. And I don't actually feel any different to how I did when I was 18. Yeah. Do you feel... I mean, I've learned a hell of a lot more, luckily. But do you know what I mean? It's just mad. Do you feel more settled and content? I don't feel settled. I feel the opposite of settled. Okay. Um, but I, I'm content. Like, when I actually think about my life, I'm like, and not on what society expects me to have achieved and Mm. be with like, you know, I'm not like engaged, ready to get married, have kids, blah, 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 blah. Like I've never wanted that anyway, but there are definitely times where I think, the only times I ever become dissatisfied with my life is if I'm falling into a trap of allowing those societal pressures to like become a thing. I think it's so easy though, isn't it? Like we, Mm. it gets talked about a lot, kind of like the, it comes from everything from parents kind of having this expectation university a degree whatever it is and then going to a job 
whatever it may be. And even when you look online, there's kind of like this correlation of how your life should go. And like you say, it is the picket fence and it's the lovely little garden and things like that. And I don't know, I, I just, I like, there's a part of you that thinks you want that mm. because that's what you think you should have. But then also I'm just like, I couldn't think of anything fucking worse either. Like that's a pure 100%. trap as well. Like I'm like, so even when people are like, you know, invest in a property, move into it. I'm like, but then I'm, that's, that's that. Like at release renting, I'm like, here's a month's notice. I'm fucking scared. I'm out. Yeah. I'm going, <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it's, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Cause it's like, even now it's like, you get compared with like, oh, you're 26. I know two 26 year olds that are multimillionaires. You're like, well, maybe I should be a multimillionaire or there's someone with a better physique at 26 or whatever it is. And you're like, oh, maybe I should look like that at 26. But it's just, it's just the world because it's so easily accessed now. I feel like as well, like at our age, like this sort of like 26 to 30 kind of bracket, everyone's life is so different. You've got the people who are engaged, bought a house, and they've got their third freaking kid on the way. And you've got people who are like living out of a shoebox, just like living their best life. Like, do you mm. know what I mean? There's there's so like so much of a like a wide spectrum yeah. when you actually like come down to it at this age. Um, and I think what the biggest thing that I've realized like most recently is like what other people doing is absolutely irrelevant to you yeah like as long as you are happy and as long as you don't allow your inner peace to be disturbed by what everyone else is doing and the opinions of others you're sweet yeah it is that you start thinking too much yeah but you know what's good about i think this is an age because i remember my mom saying this all the time even when i was like training and everything she was like when you get older you care less what people think Mm. and i was like do you like do you actually and you get to a point where you're like i've had a kind of that epiphany moment where I'm like i just generally don't give a fuck now i really don't like there's seven billion people on the planet if you like me cool if you don't it doesn't hurt my feelings like it's cool whatever it is and it's time is your best friend when it comes to that sort of stuff yeah definitely although having said that one of the things that i have realized about myself and is that I'm way more of a people pleaser than I realized. Okay, yeah. Oh, but I can, do you know what? Because you're really nice, I can imagine that. <laughs> that is, <laughs> right, okay. I've literally been in a situation and someone's like, you're too nice. Mm. And I'm like, in my head, I thought like, what? Like, why is that even a thing? Like, what do you mean I'm too nice? Like, How is that a problem? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. But now I'm like, you know what? I actually... I bend, I've realized in the last year that I bend over backwards for people who won't even bend forwards for me. Yeah, that's the difference, right? And I never really realized why I did it. Like a lot of it is just like you say, I'm, I'm just a nice person and I want to make other people happy and I want to make other people's lives easier. Yeah. But I equally realized because I think having therapy, like I said, and it being really unsuccessful has made me like do therapy on myself, like treat myself as a client. Mm. And one of the things that I realized was that I have a really low sense of self-worth. And so part of my reason for like being a people pleaser is because I don't want to have any like kind of friction or, or confrontation in my life. Yeah. And I'm like, so I put up with so much shit from other people and I will sit there. And if a friend told me the stuff that like I was saying to them, I'd be like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, yeah. get rid of this person out of your life. And I'm sitting there like, do you want to cuddle? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's something that when I first started out on this self-development journey, I was so cutthroat. I was so like, right, if you don't want to be in my life, don't freaking be in my life. Like... Yeah. I'm set on where I'm going and I made so much progress. And in the last like year or 18 months max, I've really taken a back seat with that. Mm. And I feel like I've been trying so hard to bring everyone else on this journey with me. Yeah. But that I've like almost reverted back to where I was previously. Yeah. To yeah. To try and bring everyone else up. Yeah. And that's the thing as well. There's only so much you can do. It's like, is you can think of this from personal training and coaching, right? Like, at the end of the day, like 
you have all the skills and knowledge, but it's up to the individual they want to implement it. And it's the same sort of thing. Like you can hug and care for someone. You can, like you say, it's, you can do everything for them. But if they don't show you the same back, like sometimes you get caught in that trap though as well, where you're just like, you just hope. There's that thing of hope, like you can do it and they will come out the other side and they'll, whatever it is. But I literally had the same thing. I said, um, I said to my girlfriend the other day and it was like, it was kind of like, you know, you just have one of those days, right? You just feel a bit flat. And I just, it was that self, self insecurity coming out. And I was like, I literally said, I was like, I don't know why you're with me. Mm. And I was like, and that's just like, it's a horrible thing to think. Like well, you said that to her. Yeah. And I was like, what? Like, it was kind of that thing. It was like, why me? Like, I just don't feel good enough for you sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And it applies to literally the same sort of thing. It's a really like. Why, why do you feel like that? I just think that's, I think that's just something that's just potentially just been an insecurity of mine for so long, just not, not good enough. Okay. And I think that's something that will like, I know deep down, like I'm good sort of thing and I'm happy, but like, there's still those little demons and you think, and things like, will I ever be good enough? And what is good enough? Like, what is it? Like, what will I feel when I get there? Mm. Don't know. So I had, yeah, I had this conversation last night with my mom actually, because she was like banging my head against the wall. Like, why do you not see how good you are? Mm. And I reckon you'll, you'll relate to this. And this doesn't, I don't mean this to sound arrogant. So please don't take it in an arrogant way, but I don't think I'm good. I know I'm good because Mm. everyone tells me. So I'm like, not every single person is lying to me. Yeah. But I just don't see it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. And it's the same thing. Like my mum was like, but like you're so beautiful. And I was like, I don't see it at all. Like mm. I I kind of know that I'm not like but ugly because people tell me I'm pretty, but I just don't see it like at all. So and like I just it's I know it, I just don't believe it. Yeah. But also, and I can't what, get my head around that. No, I, I fully get that. It's the same as like, I sometimes think it from a work point of view or whatever it is. And you're like, oh, what? Well, like, if someone's struggling and things like that, and it maybe doesn't work out and you're not a good fit for someone, sort of thing. But then you've had 10 messages that say, saying, thank you, you're absolutely awesome. Like, thanks for the support, whatever it is, doesn't matter. But just a small little word. And like, I know your clients and things like that send that to you but we get fixated on that one little thing, that one kind of no, or that one, this is hard sort of thing. And vice versa, like, I think that's what makes almost you very attractive as well. Like from inside out, because you don't know it. Mm. And that's probably why people think she's like, oh my God, she's actually like, she's lovely. She's pretty. She's got a good heart, boom, boom, boom. And she doesn't know it. And I think that's what is well, that is an attractive personality in someone. Yeah, I guess it's the opposite of arrogance, isn't it? Yeah, it's like saying like, if you put me in a room and I had to read off a board in front of 50 people, I'd be the most insecure person in the world because I'm not very good at reading, not very good at writing. But if you put me in a gym and talk gym stuff or whatever it is, I might come across as arrogant because that's my comfort. I'm confident in that environment but it doesn't mean I'm arrogant. It's a big difference between being confident and believing yourself versus arrogancy, 100%. And I think a lot of people who would call you arrogant in that gym environment are someone who's unconfident and intimidated by your confidence. Exactly. And it's like, you're actually misinterpreting my confidence for arrogance because you're seeing it in a negative light because you're defensive, because you are uncomfortable in like the situation that you're in. Yeah. Can we just backtrack about something a minute? So- you said that you don't feel good enough for your girlfriend. And you also said that you felt like she completed you. Yeah. Do you feel like you don't feel good enough because you were relying on her to complete you? And that you didn't feel like you were whole. You felt like there was something missing without her. I think it's a good question. I think it's, I think there was something definitely missing from 
having someone who what's really good is that she grounds me very much she grounds me she kind of it's almost like it's, it sounds we had this conversation it's like we almost use each other an excuse to kind of shut off and relax and have some downtime together and things like that and I think that's one of the biggest things like she it's very I feel so in the moment with her and most of the time I struggle to be in the moment and very content and it's like little things like oh okay so like if I feel a bit anxious and stuff my anxiety drops straight away if we just sit and chill and sit and relax I'm like wow that's lovely so I think it's I don't even know I don't even know like I think maybe for a long time I was looking for something without even realizing Um, and then it came around very just random and I'm like oh wow this feels like a really nice fulfilling feeling mm -hmm. so I don't really know what was what was even your question (laughs) I was asking whether you feel like you're not good enough for her because you were relying on her to complete you because you felt like there was something missing in yourself. I think there was something. Come along. Yeah, I think there was something definitely missing. But I think that I wouldn't say it would be just like I'm very good on my own, vice versa. We have very separate lives. Um, I think it was just something like our lives just lock in really nicely. And it just, it does just feel or maybe not fill a gap but it kind of just fills the bubble even better sort of thing which is lovely um but I don't think like at the end of the day if everything went tits up for example I wouldn't be in a bad situation Mm. either have you ever read about attachment theory no Oh, interesting. I've actually been studying it a lot because I find I read so many books and I read a lot of relationship books and and I post them on Instagram and everyone must think that I'm just like relationship. (laughs) Actually, I find it so helpful. The thing is though, it could be anything though. Relationships, everything. Like we live day to day having relationships. Like, oh, all right, you've got a relationship with your mom, your dad, your sister, anything like that. Friendships. It's not just romantic relationships. Everyone hears that word and presumes that you mean romantic and it's yeah, like yeah you know, you relationship like, so many with like people at work colleagues at work anything like that Relation- that's what i think that's what humanity's built on and that's why everyone struggled in a lockdown right because we had relationships taken away from us we had that human connection like yeah. if you go back millions of years like we all had relationships of some form mm. so if that was tribes or if that was relation like couples and things like that mm. But yeah. go on, what's what's relation? So attachment theory is one of the re- one of many reasons my recent relationship broke down. So I have see, right, there are three types of attachment: secure, mm-hmm. um, anxious, and avoidant. So secure is kind of everyone's dream where you're just you don't read too much into things and you show love very easily, it's very natural for you. Um, and you know, it, it's a very healthy relationship. An anxious attachment is the people who um, need the reassurance a mm. lot. And so you find it very easy to be intimate with people very quickly. And I don't mean that in terms of having sex, but I just mean in terms of like, like talking connection. about how your emotions and like having that connection with someone and you kind of mm. rely on it to happen quite quickly. And you pick up on people's feelings and acting different very quickly. So like, you know, if someone's like messaging you a little bit different, you freaking notice that like straight yeah. off the bat. And then you've got the avoidant, which is where you are very uncomfortable with that intimacy and that feeling of, of being connected with someone. You find it very, you find that you feel very vulnerable with it. Yeah. And you struggle to get close to people and you struggle to let people in and you push people away and you'll find every negative thing that happens with someone like as like trying to put you off them almost. Yeah. And I struggle to think about what I was like before my pr- previous relationship. I think we just started dating um, when we had this last, um, this last podcast a year mm. ago. And um I struggle to remember what I was like pre prior to it, but as a result of a few different things, I became a very anxiously attached person. Yeah. 
and he was an avoidant person. Right, okay. And they, they talk about how they're like the two least compatible people because if like, for example, when when he was like off with me or whatever, I'd pick up on it and I'd need that reassurance and I'd need him to tell me that he loves me and I'd I'd be like, oh my God, oh my God. And me pulling in would make him push away, which would make me pull in more and him push yeah. away more. And it's just like a freaking recipe for disaster. And that that made my attachment worse. It yeah. like it, it heightened it. Whereas if I'm with someone who's very secure, I feel very secure as well. Like I don't feel like I need to read too much into things because people so are being honest and communicating. The secure and secure is that a strong match or does secure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so secure, secure, and then obviously if someone was anxious, secure, would that potentially bring the other person up to security? Yeah. Right. Yeah, because they can speak openly about their like feelings and communicate and things like that. It and it's the anxious and avoidant people who don't don't do well together because one's trying to push in and one's trying to pull away. Yeah. And it's that constant like back and forth, where do I stand kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. That's the typical thing with dating though, isn't it? Like that's a guy's thing. It's like, okay, I'll play it hard. Like I won't text her or something like that. And things like that, I'll back off because if I back off, she'll pull in and then I'm like, cool, that's it. So it's, it's but obviously- but Why do we in- have to play games? <laughs> this is my yeah, but, attachment style. Like, don't no, do this to me. <laughs> we, had this, we had this conversation, but it's so, okay. <laughs> what I hate from not, okay. Let's not stereotype it. It's just general- men women <laughs> um girls play tricks they play games because they want you to say something or they want they're trying to like they're trying to lead you down a route like i want you to say this i'm giving you the keys to say this so say it and then you think we're fucking mind readers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we have to be like right okay so i think i grew up with like my, i grew up with my mom and sister so i'm all right with like oh, okay there's the hints or there's that and things like that but there's definitely been some moments where I oh, fucking missed out on that one. Yeah, should have, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should have said that, but yeah. But it's What but kind God. of attachment style would you say that you had? Um, I was probably the same as you. Probably like I was, what was it? The anxious kind of, yeah, I was probably there. Um, but now I'm just, I'm very like, I'm very open. Like if I feel shit, I feel sad, I'll, I'll say it sort of thing mm-hmm. and vice versa. If I'm pissed off or if I think whatever it is I'll say it um I'm not really like a we like we had this conversation I'm just like I can't I've never been in like a relationship argument ever Mm -hmm. because I'm just like it's just a waste of time like let's just talk about it we don't have to get an argument about it I'm like and speak about it before it gets to the point where there's an argument because it's all the little things that build up it's Mm -hmm. like it could but and it is always the little things it's like if you don't, if you don't like something this way, whatever it is, the biggest thing that I've learned being in, I'm very like, boom, 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 routine structure, whatever it is. So letting someone in, I've had to be very like, compromising, really. It's like in the, the day, if you have a relationship, it's like, you have to accept that's just how they are. And you adore them for it. Everyone has their flaws, everything has those things. And I think that's the biggest thing is being like, it's not taking things to heart or personally either. It's been mm-hmm. like, that's just them. That's just them and things like that. And as long as you communicate and talk about it, you're like, oh, that's why you do that. Or oh, that's how you do things. I think just it, like, communication's a thing that's just died or the actual confidence to speak up and tell people how you feel has kind of died off. And assuming that people should be a mind reader and understand, like if I've gone quiet, there's something wrong and you should guess. You're like, no, just say it's okay to go quiet but then just bring it up in half an hour when you've had your quiet moment mm-hmm. that's it but yeah that's it. I think it's I just I think communication is one of those things I think it is like par- obviously it's paramount to relationships mm. and I think the not being able to speak about your issues and things that are going on in your head for whatever reason whether it's because that person makes they makes those feeling like your feelings feel invalid, whether they make it feel like um, their problems are worse than yours, or if they, you know, are just uncomfortable talking about emotions or whatever like that, that relationship is never going to last. 
I was actually having a conversation with someone um, a couple of weeks about this and they were like, I think like sex is the most important thing in a relationship. And I said, it's one of the most important things in a relationship. Don't get me wrong, because at the end of the day, it's one of the few things that actually is the difference between any other relationship that you have, like whether it's platonic or not. Mm. But communication, because there's going to be a time in your in your relationship where sex isn't the be all and end all. Maybe someone's died. Maybe you're in a really bad place and whatever, and you're not having sex every day or every other day or whatever, however often you want to. And if that's all your relationship is based on and you can't actually communicate with each other, yeah. where do you expect that to go? Also like, sex, yeah, that's it. Also, I don't think sex is a very an attractive thing either. Like as soon as you've been with someone like past the honeymoon stages, do you know what okay. I mean? Like that's yeah. what I mean. But like- I thought you meant it's not an attractive like, you don't feel attractive when you have big sex and I was like no. right this is the whole other issue we need to delve into no but like it goes like when you've been with someone for a period of time it's kind of like you adore them you find them attractive so yes 100% because I think the difference is when you sleep with someone and you actually like their head that's a whole different ball game like sex changes then 100% so like if you're just like you say if it's if you haven't got that kind of communication, that talk and things like that, sex is a really artificial thing then. Like we've all done it, like one night stands, I'm like, it's literally emotionless. Mm -hmm. Like, but as soon as you bring emotion into it and you have a connection with someone, it's a whole different ball game, like you say. Yeah. But yeah, that's it. Like, I think the nicest thing about having a strong relationship is it's so nice to actually speak to someone and be completely heart on sleeve everything like that and just lay out on the table i think that's because there's not many people you can actually do that with either 100 percent. and that's a lovely feeling yeah what do you think is different in this relationship in comparison to your last relationship or actually not that how do you feel like you are different in this relationship to last previous relationships i'm a lot more I'm very clear on who I am and kind of what I want from myself, even my future to an extent. Um, I just feel very content with who I am. And I probably potentially, I feel more confident in who I am, even in the last six, six months to a year. I just feel like this is me. Like, this is it. Like, there's nothing to hide. There's nothing to show. And that's it. We actually had that conversation last time, didn't we? When we were talking about dating and yeah. just being who you are from the outset. Yeah. And that that's something that's like, is so, it, it's literally the difference between whether your relationship works out or not, because yeah. there is only so long you can hold a facade up. Yeah, God, like, yeah. And you'll kill yourself <laughs> very quickly. You'll, oh, yeah. honestly, yeah. But I think that's it. I think that's truly what it is. As soon as you go into any form, like a friendship or anything like that, wherever it is, if you go into any relationship and just be like, this is me, this is my baggage, this is what I got, let's go. And that's mm -hmm. it. Like, it's yeah. like, I always, we, we talked about it the other day and it was, who did I say? We were talking about it in the gym with someone. And it's like that Eminem, the like eight mile movie where he just lays all his shit. Like, right, I live with my mom. I fucking got no money. I live on the sofa, got no food, all this sort of shit. If you just go all in, people haven't got anything against you. They haven't got mm -hmm. anything to throw at you. And it's kind of the same when you go into a relationship, but like, this is my life. This is everything. Mm -hmm. And people play it up so much, don't they? Because with like, how much do you say too soon? Blah, 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 blah. <sighs> like I went on a date a few weeks ago and I was like, I was talking to B about it. And I was like, Right, when do I men when do I mention this? Like when do I mention the ex? Like when like how because you don't want to like put people off too soon, blah, blah, blah. And then I said to her, I was like, I'm just gonna wait and see how it feels. Yeah. Like why am I even trying to plan what I need to tell when? Oh, you don't. On the third day, I'll say this, and on the fourth day, I'll mention oh, this. Oh, like, yeah. No. I think as well, like straight away from a conversation, you just know, like, oh, I was seeing this person didn't work out. If you just have general conversations and shit like that, mm. it pops up. And I think sometimes the sooner you can have those relationships, uh, those conversations, pff, way easier. Like if I went into <laughs> Yeah, a because we're anxious. <laughs> Attachment, we need everyone to say straight away from the get-go. <laughs> I think it's what, like, they, I can't imagine anything, like, don't get me wrong, I think things like kids and things like that, that could change. Like uh, right now, 26, 
not even think about it not even think about it but who knows in two years time three four years time it might change but right now i have no intention anything like that but if you kind of said that in a conversation i have no intention of having kids right now i'm like that's not a bad thing or a positive like sit like mm. unless the person wants kids next week but yeah that's it. but them. i don't think you, you can't script your life and you can't script how you're going to say things so just like if it's on your mind just say it and if it comes up in a conversation don't try and hold your tongue back either like unless don't say you're like let me like maybe think a little bit before you say but unless it's going to hurt the individual but telling someone what you kind of like and what you don't like and what you see that's not that's not something you need to hide back at all no and like you say the quicker that you have those conversations the quicker you can understand whether that person's for you or not yeah 100 percent. you don't want to get not, like then that's cool like yeah. it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you or whatever it's just that you're not a match yeah 100 percent. pin so much on like making everything work to the point where sometimes we lose ourselves so much because we have this like fear of abandonment and fear of failure. And that like, if someone walks away from us, then that's because we weren't good enough. Yeah. And it, and that we try and make, make it work for so much longer than we should have done. And it's what I did in my last relationship. Like I was so scared to let go and walk away partly because my self-worth had been like plummeted during the relationship, but I was almost like, I, I don't want it to not work. Mm, yeah. And then like, when you take a step back and you're like, that was never going to work. Yeah. Like there was no trust there. You know, we wanted different things. We we're at different stages of our lives, blah, 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 blah. And that doesn't mean either of us are like inherently a bad person. It just means that we weren't compatible. No. And you don't need to work and spend so long trying to make something work just for the sake of like not failing at something or yeah. whatever I think the good thing is like when you come out of those sort of relationships when you take a step back and you're like we've all done it you're like what was I doing like what was I doing and you sometimes laugh at yourself at the things that you did but at the time like as soon as emotions are involved and things like that and how you feel about someone yourself they take mm -hmm. over like you lose that kind of that clarity mm -hmm. it just goes and I d again I think obviously this is your personality but you are lovely and mm. like this like you say it's probably it was probably one of the things why like it kind of just dragged out potentially it's because 100%. like I put up with so much more than I should have done I also think that like I think he was very aware of the sort of person that I was mm. and the fact that I would always be there even if it was in a friendship capacity like if anyone needs me, I'm there, like always have been that person. But I remember like this time last year when we had our conversation, like I was so sure of myself and I was so like, like strong-minded and like happy with where I was and all of this sort of stuff. And I'm, and like, I'm sure anyone who goes back and listens to that podcast now will hundred percent see, see that about me. Mm. And I remember like we'd broken up and we got back together and I was sit, I was sat in work and one of my friends, he looked at me and he said, why have you gone back with him? Like, why? And he was getting really angry at me. I've never told anyone this, but I burst into tears. I said, because no one else is ever gonna love me. And the room was like silent. And I said to him, I said, we are never talking. I said, I don't know where that came from. We are never talking about that again. And I got up and I walked out the room and we've never spoken about it since. <laughs> but it's obviously like, because like that was obviously how I felt. That's obviously where it came from. I'm like, oh my God, where did it come from? Yeah. But because, and that's what I was saying, you know, about like how one person can change. Like you think you're so strong minded, you think you're there and one person doing one thing. And yeah. this is not me slagging this person off, by the way. Like, no, of course not. Even like no. it is because at the end of the day, like, you know, it, it's on me. Like I, I let it happen, right? Like, but yeah, yeah, like one thing that someone does can completely just throw you back to square one. Yeah. And yeah. you're, yeah, and you have to build yourself back up again. And I think like if anyone's listening to this and they're in that situation, like whatever you do, don't give up building yourself back up. Because yeah. if, you've if you've done it before and you've been there before, you can 100% do it again. I think that's the thing that a lot of times that we have to remind ourselves of is, and like you say, it's like, 
life is always going to throw shit at you and you're always going to come out the other end. So it's always just remembering, be like, cool, you've had a bunch of heartbreaks before or whatever it is, or you've had a bunch of like, sometimes life just throws shit at you, whatever it is. And you always get through the other end. So Tom, it's so hard, but this is where that self-awareness kind of comes in and fights you a little bit, but it's just being like, I've done this before. I can do it again. It will be hard. But time is your best friend here. Time will cure a lot of things. Yeah. And And every lesson that comes your way is there for a reason. And if you're wondering why the same shit keeps, keeps, keeps happening to you, it's because you haven't learned that lesson yet. Yeah. And and it will, like, there'll be the same cycles that repeat and repeat until you learn the lesson of being strong enough or walking away or whatever that lesson is that you need to learn. So if if you're questioning why the same thing, like I said, is happening, then you need to look inward and realize like, what are you not learning? Because there's something that you need to change about who you are or what you're doing or the situation that you're in yeah. that you need to alter. And if you don't alter that, you're going to be in the same position indefinitely. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. How do you feel now? Um, I'm getting there. Yeah. Um, my confidence like was massively knocked and this is like what the conversation that I was having with my mum last night like I mentioned at the beginning Mm. um and but in the last couple of weeks I feel like I've turned a corner with it like I think I finally learned that lesson that I was needing to learn the entire time and that's about like I said at the beginning the biggest thing that I've learned is is that one person can completely like take you back a hundred steps yeah and that you will keep being taught the same lesson if you don't choose to choose to learn it yeah yeah. and it's and it's a really hard situation and I think being someone who's come from a place before where I've been so unhappy and been very fragile it was really scary to see me back in that place yeah yeah like where I was like like feeling thoughts that I've been thinking and things like that that I hadn't thought for years. Yeah. And I remember, this is getting so deep, but I will. I remember B like ringing me and being like, I'm so fucking angry at this situation and that you've you've let him back in again because I now have to worry that you're going to do something really stupid and you're going to hurt yourself because, because of someone else. And mm-hmm. you are back in that position. You have put yourself there. And, and you think like, shit, like I was actually like, it took for her to say that for me to realize like how low I'd got. Yeah. If you see what I mean. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think that's a true friend though as well. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That's a true friend that will stand up and no matter if you're worst or your best, it's just gonna be like, here's a little wake up call. Like that's it. But also knowing when's the right time to say it yeah that's 100%. the difference it's like you need a shoulder for a period you need some support but then it gets to the point i'm like all right come on girl let's mm. let's fucking do this like you're a strong individual yeah but yeah 100 percent. and yeah. but yeah how does this year look for you <laughs> what have you got planned <laughs> how are you feeling first no i'm good i am good i got a, yeah just yeah it feels weird to be like uh, yeah to, to be alone for like a week and a half sort of thing do you live with your girlfriend yeah so like it well yeah accidentally yeah <laughs> so it feels a little, yeah it was it was quite a funny it's quite a funny story so but um yeah so it just it feels a bit weird it feels a bit lonely You're like hmm, okay so no one's coming in that's it like because she was she's been on prep the whole time so I was like cooking the last meal cooking breakfast so I'm like what do I do? (laughs) Things like that. So no, but otherwise everything's good. It's just a busy year. So I'm excited. Um, Yeah. I'm excited for this year. So it's a good. Are you thinking about prepping at all? Yeah. So I'm going to get back on stage at the end of this year. Um, It's been a while. I think like 2018 or 19. I don't know. One Mm -hmm. of those years. So it's been a while. Um, So yeah, I'll start. I think I'm going to start beginning of August and do kind of a few at the back end of the year. Don't know where. Um, potentially australia because we have to go about back out there um for like her work and things like that so we're just thinking about when the shows get released and stuff like that um 
but otherwise it's just kind of a lot of traveling over the next couple of months and yeah just enjoying it just I think that's the point you're like we got to it's like fuck it like let's just go like you live you're here like let's just book mm. a flight and go we have jobs where we can do it so like oh it's so important to make the most of that yeah so I'm just like it's been an expensive few weeks of just booking a shit ton of flights but <laughs> no it's exciting it's exciting so it's just gonna be a nice year a nice year nice but yeah that's it otherwise just rinse and repeat really just training's good eating getting fat and that's it <laughs> <laughs> so it's fine so it's easy have you got anything planned for this year anything exciting um i don't do you know what not massively like there are a few like things that I'm I'm projects I'm working on and things like that which I don't want to speak about too soon and I know that there's a lot like that will change this year that I'm really looking forward to mm. but I think like my biggest thing for like when everyone at the start of the year or back end of last year was like what's your goals for like 2022 blah 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 yeah I just want to be happy man like yeah, that is funny. like my biggest goal and like like I said I'm I am like really getting there like March was a massive turning month for me where I was like you know what like enough's enough yeah it's fucking eight and shit, yeah. yeah like oh my god <laughs> man, isn't it but I was like enough is enough and like I said I've been really working on journaling I've been journaling so much like so much and it's just really like changing the trajectory of like where my mind's going and like what I want out of life and all of that sort of stuff and I just want to continue that like I do want to continue like I feel like it's a bit like muscle memory like when you've been in a bad spot it's, it's easier to get out of when you've already got out of it before yeah and I really feel like I am like I, I'm I'm back to where I, where I was but now I'm like now it's time to get better like yeah and I feel really excited about that like level of self-development yeah that's brilliant and um, so, yeah, I just, like my, this year is just about being happy and making myself happy. Yeah. I'm working on myself. But that's a really good thing for you. Like you say, it's like, OK, cool. Now you get to be selfish. Yeah. That's it. Like you say, it's just like it's just time to do you. Yeah. And it, and you know what? One of the biggest things is is changing how like my perception of things like being on my own. And mm. I don't mean in a, like a romantic sense. I mean, like literally physically being on your own. Mm. And instead of being like, oh, my God, I'm lonely because I'm on my own it's like choose solitude yeah. which is like such a peaceful state like being on your own and I think like that sort of thing is is like is so important it's like the the way you speak to yourself and it's something I speak about with clients all the time and I'm sure you do as well like you know the way you speak about yourself and to yourself yeah. is where you end up and I think that those things that the stories you tell yourself about why you are where you are and all of those sorts of things are so key for that yeah 100 percent. and that's so, the yeah, thing just... is i was there was an interest i don't know where i read it i don't know if it's true but apparently they asked <laughs> they asked like i think it was like i don't know it was like 100 males or something like that and they asked them would you rather spend 15 minutes in silence on your own or would you rather give yourself an electric shock yeah and i'm I'm assuming like it was quite a strong electric shock. I'm just going with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. I, and it was I something like eighty-five percent chose to have an electric. I posted shock. it on my story. Oh, did you? I mean, yeah, been yours to be fair. <laughs> and I was just like, "Are you fucking fifteen minutes in my head?" But I think this is where I'm like, I I enjoy like my alone time. Like, I enjoy like I, after this mm. podcast, fucking oats is already made. I'm just curling up and putting pajamas on and chilling, mm -hmm. sort of thing. So it's like, I just can't imagine like fifteen minutes, like just to. Yeah. Like, again, it's like I I said to um, one of the guys out here that I want to get into like morning meditation just for five minutes, just to sit out on a balcony and just be like, just breathing sort of thing. Cause I need to start doing that. Um, but I'm just like, how can you, I don't know, 15 minutes is mind blowing that you'd rather, I think it's really sad, number one. Um, but that just shocked me. That was like a stat that I'm like, man, that's crazy. It's communication. People don't know how to communicate anymore. Yeah. And that includes the communication that they have with themselves. So true, yeah. And like, it's interesting actually, because the 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 guy that I'm I've been referring to, I asked him that because I knew that he really struggled, like being on his own. Like that was one of the things, like at the beginning of our relationship, that was like a real thing. And I said to him, "What would you do?" Like, I noticed you didn't vote on the poll. Like, what would you do? <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um he said 
<laughs> before I met you, I would have given myself the electric shock. But now I'd rather be on my own for 15 minutes. That's nice. Yeah. Do you know what? That's something that's really positive that can come out of that situation. Yeah, but I think what's nice about that is that you potentially have interacted his life. Yeah. So maybe even today, like you hope to think that actually he would say the same answer. Yeah, hundred percent. Which would be lovely. Yeah, and they, I mean that was only like a month ago. Like we yeah. like we weren't together at that, that point, but like yeah, yeah. And I think I just and I think it's a lot of that is like I got him into journaling. Yeah. And like mindfulness and all of that sort of stuff. And I think learning and your to be on your own with your thoughts, working through them in a way like journaling. Mm allows you to not be scared of your thoughts thoughts only become scary when you're thinking about them but you're not doing anything about them yeah because they start running wild and you're like oh my god there's so much going through i don't know i don't know where to start yeah but then when you do things like journaling meditating mindfulness blah 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 blah, you're learning to work through those thoughts and then you realize that they're not that scary that's what anxiety is right that's pretty much what like anxiety is the fear of something out of control that hasn't even happened yet like you say but I'm like oh like being anxious like tomorrow's really busy I'll do x y and z sort of thing and I've got to be here I'm like just write it down if you just write it down be like right boom 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 and straight away like you say with journaling I think that was the probably the biggest thing to be fair even speaking to you last year it was just like even now I'm just like oh like uh, to be fair I don't journal every day but I take moments out of the day just to be like right I need half an hour just I leave my phone up here go for a walk and things like that no distractions and then there's some mornings where I do like just sit and just, I just write like just whatever I feel, whatever I fancy and ambitions or things about myself, like affirmations, whatever it is. And just having a bit of like a mind dump, like even mm-hmm. a couple of times a week has been crazy, crazy beneficial. That's how I actually got mega consistent with journaling, removing the pressure of doing it every day. Yeah. Like, and I have clients now who like started off doing it every day and now that like, I don't feel like I need to every day but they 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 have that skill and they've they've made that skill that they can then like fall back on it when they need to yeah and that's and that's how you get through life right is like you don't have to exercise those skills every single time but it's knowing how to do it yeah and how to implement it when you need them yeah 100% that's the same it's like oh, you can always re- like tracking food like it works but you don't need to do it all the time but if you want to like mm-hmm. shift a couple of pounds just track some food for a week sort of thing same sort of thing literally yeah. but no it's it but no it's been it's been an interesting interesting year it has yeah, yeah. it has been so that's it were that's you it. where you are now no <laughs> are you where you where you thought you would be this time last year yes and no okay i think yes from a personal like you say from a happiness standpoint and a content standpoint yes Mm -hmm. um i think from like work and training that's always never gonna be never gonna be satisfied i think it's just making sure that you are i think like i said at the beginning it's like just being like it's okay to be the same for a month it's okay to do this for a few weeks exactly the same it's okay not to get stronger every day whatever it is and it's okay um so from a training like things like nah i'm not satisfied sort of thing and i'll probably beat myself up on that all the time um but yeah from a personal standpoint yeah I think probably better which is a nice thing to say um that's really nice yeah that's it so yeah that's it it's just um I think that's the thing it's like when you think like that's so that this is sometimes why I hate goal setting because it's like people like write down your goals what you want to achieve this year I'm like you don't understand what the life's going to fucking throw at you you mm-hmm. don't know like and I think it's just about every day just try and be your best and if you do that like you will generally you, you you will achieve your goals you will achieve whatever you want to achieve in life if that is happiness if that is whatever it is you will achieve it but trying to put a time stamp on things it's i i hate that shit it just gives me anxiety like it's i hate it it's like it's right i need to at the end of quarter two i need to be this and then i need to think about boom 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 like nah fuck that no way i'm just not doing it <laughs> yeah and if it, and if you know it doesn't and work if it, then why are you gonna yeah, try and, it. and if, if you fail like you're like well that was shit wasn't it i failed mm. and it makes you feel shit <laughs> if i'm completely yeah. honest so i'm like it's good to aim but i'm like but also i think like i just come very like aware of actually what i want from 
the rest of my life to be honest and it isn't the mm-hmm. things that I thought last year yeah so I'm like mm, actually cool so the fact that I could book a bunch of flights and now travel the world for like six weeks I'm like that's pretty sick I'm right with that mm-hmm. <laughs> it's fine fine by me yeah so, yeah see so otherwise it's just we're all gonna have that me and you're just gonna have that person personality type of just like never satisfied but I also think that's the reason why people turn around to you and they'll be like oh Haley, like you're like you're fucking smashing it or you're doing really well because that is just your personality type I think your probably biggest fear would be in oh actually in six months time I don't want to be in the same position as I am now mm. since you're yeah. around to that's my biggest fear I think is it? that and being unhappy yeah yeah being unhappy is mine being unhappy and being like if nothing changed in six months, I'd be pretty gutted. That would eat me up. That, that would have been one of my fears, but I feel like I'm a lot more content with that now. Yeah. But that's I good. Think, because yeah, if no, nothing I, changed in six months' time, I th- would like, actually, I, I should be like, actually, I'm really happy with that. Because you're happy with where you are right now. Yeah. That's it. Instead of being unhappy that I'm not somewhere else or better. Mm. And I sometimes and think... Unhappiness that- comes from like appreciating what you've got around you right this second yeah. because unhappiness is only like expectations not being fulfilled yeah it's not necessarily what's actually happening yeah, yeah. It, it's just that your expectations are different yeah yeah literally so if you stop setting expectations then you're going to be a hell of a lot happier yeah because and also not- on to other people as well that's a big one expecting from others as well I don't don't like actually just be like if they do that's lovely and amazing if they don't Mm. it's cool yeah absolutely fine because it's their choice it's their actions it's their life so it doesn't matter like if you if you expect it I'm like why don't you just do it yourself or why don't you just (laughs) like take responsibility for it for yourself sort of thing but if you're expecting love someone to cuddle you and someone to like give you all the support and like, yeah, I'll take you there and I'll give you this. I'm like, nah, that's it. You'll get your, I did that exactly the same thing with my dad. That was exactly the same thing. That was like, he, he, he remarried and moved to Australia sort of thing when I was 16, kind of an age that you want a dad, like as a young male. And Mm. I expected like, like, I don't know. I expected a father. I expected a father to have a dad, to have a dad. And then which can I just say is not an unrealistic expectation. <laughs> it shouldn't have. be. It shouldn't be. No. No. But I think that's why for so long I was so. That could be again that this is where we come down to like there was a gap in my life or whatever it was. It and I think a lot of it does come down to childhood stuff and things like that. Um, but there was that gap, and I was like, potentially it was having that person, that role model, or that individual in my life. And for so years and years and years, I think it only got till probably I said, I spoke to my mom on the, um, on the, on the phone the other day and I was like, oh, I haven't really spoke to him in like a year. And she was like a year. And I was like, yeah. And she, she's always a bit like, fucking hell, really? Like he's your dad and he hasn't picked up the phone. And I'm just like, I'm cool. It's, and now I'm absolutely fine with it. But I think for mm-hmm. probably like eight years, expecting someone to show up 100% or to give you a text yeah. but don't don't expect anything yeah so yeah I think uh, parents is a hard one like because I think like as a child you know you're brought into this world mm. with the expectation that you will have those support networks and I don't think that's an unrealistic like I say expectation to have yeah um but yeah in terms of like what you expect of other people yeah it's it's that the it's the full short of that which gives you so much unhappiness yeah 100 percent. and like you say yeah it's like there's a very different things but yeah i think it's again that was a time thing yeah that's it so but i think when you can just brush it off now yeah it's cool <laughs> and it actually is okay it's cool and i and if it genuinely is do you know what i mean so many people will be like oh my god oh. yeah that is yeah it's fine <laughs> not fine but yeah. not yeah, fine like, of course but I think I've just come very like I think they my I just know that if you have one good parent or like a good little family that's all you need 
That's all you what need. What that family looks like is irrelevant as long as you have Oh, that God, yeah. Like, like 100%. That. We live in a world now where, like, families are broken left, right, and centre and things like that. So it's like... And it's, it's no fault of their own. It's no fault of the individuals. Again, it's just, like... You can't help it if your family breaks up and argues and does whatever it is. Like that is not in your control. Um, mm. And but also as a child, it's very different because you're like, oh, is this because of me? And is this where like your insecurities come from and mm. things like that? Maybe, maybe I'm not a psychologist and things like that, but it's probably true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think like with those sorts of things, and and not so much as children, but as you grow up into adults, like what happened to you is not your fault like no, you course. can't change those things but it is a hundred percent your responsibility at that point to make sure that unresolved trauma doesn't translate into other pla- like places in your life like you need to resolve that trauma yourself yeah. it's your responsibility to make sure those feelings are dealt with yeah 100%. and that you're not pouring onto other people for the sake of it or you know walking around with a woe is me attitude yeah i had the same thing so like my little nephew kind of he was probably going into like year one or reception, like kind of primary school. He was going into that first kind of year when COVID hit. And it was really, it was kind of weird because I'm like, he's never going to, he's going to have this thing that school has these restrictions and all this sort of stuff. And it was a bit sad because it was like, he was like, it was really kind of a bit shitty to see because it's like, you can't go out and play and things like that. And there's all these mixed messages. You can sit next to him in class, put a mask on, but you can't go out and touch him afterwards and things like that. And I'm like, so the first two years of your school life was like that and things like that. I'm like, that's not in your control either. Mm -hmm. But I think things like that will impact him in five, 10 years time for sure. Because it's not been like a 16 week thing that we all thought. It's like, fucking here they're still wearing masks and you're like are you serious guys can we drop this shit like yeah that's mad isn't it yeah so you're like I think things like that kids will be impacted by that Mm. and they'll probably find that out in 10 years time (laughs) yeah and let's hope by that point the NHS um and like the system has a hell of a lot better way to deal with mental health fuck no it's nuts (laughs) isn't it but then I feel like now everyone's over it I'm like now we have other worries of like oh actually we live in the (sighs) the world that we live in and now we just decide to blow people up again are like are we fucking serious like are we Have not we actually got back to this point <laughs> are we not grown-ups now like are we, we going go... through this lesson that we haven't learned again <laughs> i just oh it's crazy it's crazy when you take a step back and you just think what the fuck is going on <laughs> what is going on the world is just fucked isn't it it's it's, it's... <laughs> i'm like it's good that we you've can got laugh. to laugh otherwise you'll cry you would yeah 100 percent. you're like fuck this is like serious but like if you don't laugh about it you're like it's cool but yeah i'm all right because i put money in tesla so that's gone through the roof all the <laughs> gone up so i'm like yes <laughs> so you're fine you're sorted don't I'm worry good. about anyone else I'm set. <laughs> <laughs> let's get an electric car let's get the stocks back up let's do this <laughs> come on we got this <laughs> so it's fine easy what, what are you up to this weekend it's friday friday this night weekend. Vibes. Pardon? Friday night vibes going out. Friday night. Vi- oh shit, it's Friday, isn't it? I'm gonna go to the gym, um, <laughs> and then I'm gonna work tomorrow. Um, and then Sunday, I am. I've got a nice day Sunday. I'm going out for dinner, um, nice. and I'm seeing some friends. So that'll be lush. What about you? Like, um, super chilled on tomorrow. I just take Saturdays completely off. Um, so I'll probably just go do some work in the morning. And then I think a few of us are catching up in like the afternoon, evening, just shisha, chill. And that's literally it. And then Sunday, back into training, first day of kind of check-ins and stuff like that. So, and then I fly back to the UK on Thursday. So it's kind of just get everything sorted then. And then that's Thursday till like the following Sunday, I think. And then, yeah. And then I fly to Orlando there for two weeks, then Pittsburgh, Mexico, back here for five days australia so yeah jet oh, lag fest <laughs> jet lag fest yeah melatonin. well safe travels i hope you have the best time it'll be good it'll be good yeah it'll be full on it will be full on so yeah that's it. Just keep your morning routine the same you'll be fine <laughs> yeah literally but that's the, that was the nice thing cause she, like because she's on prep you're like everything's like yeah oh, thank fuck <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> my OCD brain can chill. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. It's like yeah. I've been on prep since Christmas. I'm like, this is so nice. <laughs> I just get to eat, so it's blanket. fine. <laughs> but no, awesome, hun. Um, as always, if there's any piece of advice that you could give to someone to take them one percent further forward tomorrow, what would it be? Um, it would have to be what I said at the beginning, like recognize the actually no not everyone in your life has good intentions so stop looking for them in everyone and as a result like recognize when it's best to walk away from things um because yeah that one person can take you back 100 steps that's good i love it what would yours be mine would be very similar i think I think actually for me, the biggest thing that I've learned is probably the one is, is like, it's okay just to ride the wave. Like, don't try and be perfect every day. Don't try and do all this. Don't try and like, actually, if you want to curl up and watch Netflix tomorrow, I'm probably going to do the same. So absolutely. It's like, it's absolutely fine. Just to, just to chill, just to chill, just to ride the wave. If you want to just, maintain if you just want to be content if you're happy and content right now just keep fucking doing that (laughs) like generally until you feel like you want to get the urge to push on or urge to try something different then generally like if you are happy and you are content i'm like just keep doing that because not enough people are so i'm like you are one in a million so you're doing a good job (laughs) oh i love that that's good that's cool right my love i will love you and leave you i'll let you go what are you training uh legs that's it how how was I, i feel like women you always train legs like three or four times a week anyway so it's always like oh god no 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 twice a week oh do you yeah what's your i do not understand how anyone trains it more no i do not have the recovery capabilities for that no way no way what you how often you train at the moment uh two upper two lower and then um i do like a crossfit class as well cool cool i bet that i know the dreaded crossfit word (laughs) Jesus. Oh, do you know what? I think it's brilliant. I've said you know this. what? For fitness, cardio, all of that sort of stuff, it's it's mint. I said that when I get to like 30, I'm like, I'm done with this lifting stuff. I'm like three days a week lifting, and then I'll just be doing yoga once a week. I'll do like a vegan veggie day, everything. I'm like, yeah. I need to get bodybuilding out of the system. <laughs> 100%, 100%, I agree. That's cool. Right. I will love you and leave my love. Thank you for your time as always. And thank I will you for speak inviting me back on. Boom. Bye.